Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the shop. We're about to continue with the epic build with our little uh, three inch machinist clamps. But I gotta warn you, the sum of this stuff is, uh, I filmed this almost a month ago, so there might be some inconsistencies. Uh, no, we'll skip that for now. We're gonna do the screws. And I do believe he actually drew these suckers to scale. Nice. This might be a little tricky to, <laughs> to face that off though. Yeah, a little bit of run out there. If I have to grab the steady rest, I will. I think that'll do. Mm, I guess we're about right there. We're gonna go in there with a the bottoming tap too, since we have one. All right, we'll put a little bit bigger center drill in there. I checked so the tip doesn't actually damage the threads. Just so we can get a good register, plus the chamfers it too. All right, so now I guess we're gonna need an indicator. I ground this tool for making my pulley and it's got a really fine point on it. So I'm gonna kind of roll with that. So we have clearance for the uh, thing there. <laughs> Live center. Hey, let's hit that with a mic. Oh, it's not too terrible. 256. And we're one thou over. Really, it should be a one or two thou undersized just to give it a good sliding fit. Yep, 249, that's right on the money. All right, so we gotta put about three and a half inches of thread on here. Just gonna use this little ruler here. But if I'm gonna run that die down this thing, I'm gonna have to turn that down a bit. Now we're just gonna turn about yeah, five thou off the oats. Off the OD, maybe six. Probably six is even number. <laughs> All right, so I swapped around to the three jaw here. Yeah, one thing I don't like about those collets is they don't have the best gripping force. I'm hoping the three jaw is good enough. Oh, no way. see okay one more call let's try I'm hoping I don't have to shave another five thou off there or something well nope, appears to be working oh god so far anyway <laughs> Oh, 
Clean some of those chips out of there. All right, well that went pretty much as expected. I haven't had a chance to, I haven't really deburred nothing yet on these, but we'll try out the, yeah, and that actually feels pretty good. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Nice clean thread. Well, it doesn't look clean from where I'm sitting, but it feels clean. We'll hit it with a little bit of rubberized abrasive here. I really like these for this sort of thing because they've they form to the threads and they generally do a nice job. Yep, nice and smooth now. Yeah, these work really nice and surprisingly last a long time. So worth the 20, <laughs> 28 bucks or whatever that was. All right, I still got one more thing to do on the back side of this as far as turning goes. I'm going to stick that all the way in there. So I got to face the back of this piece off. Since I forgot to do so earlier, and it should be a little bit bigger than the threads, so no problemo there. A little bit of a chamfer, generous chamfer, I think, on this one. And one, maybe, maybe one final little coupe de grace here. <laughs> I'm just going to gently grab those threads. Not hard. We're going to take a little 400 grit. And there's a little bolt. We just got to drill a hole in the end and um, that'll be it. All right, a little bit of an experiment here on my part. I'm trying to get, I got four of these little washers to make. So I'm trying to make it repeatable. I already put a chamfer in there just because I wanted to see where it was going to end up. Yeah, I'm going to set a little stop on the tailstock here. So I extend it to two inches and whatever little measurements I got to do will be just with the compound, just for the chamfer. And I'll catch it down there, hopefully. And there's a little bit of a deeper. Nice. That's one. Okay. That'll be our stop. So I cut these down and I tried to actually thread the ends 1024. Uh, unfortunately, my Mastercraft taps just just took the meat right off of there and just made a huge mess. So, so now I got some handles that are slightly shorter than they're supposed to be. And when I went to, uh, oh, our washers turned out pretty good, except for one that turned out a little bit skinny, so I made another one. But when I went to go turn the keepers, I pulled it out of the collet. I was a little bit short on material. Luckily, I got some 5 eighths kicking around here, so we're just going to use that. So I've just got another deep hole to drill here. I'll just get right back to you. And that should be a very close approximation to three eighths of an inch. At least that's what the dials tell me. Yep, not too bad. It's a shitty chamfer, kind of. Yeah, it's a little bit of stick out on there. But being brass, I think we'll be okay. Mm. I 
That's a little scary. A little bit of stick out there. That's probably why it's a little bit on the uh, janky side. my position with the indicator down here and should bring us back to exactly where I left off. Yeah, it's a lot of stick out. I don't like it. But I think we'll, we'll make it. Keeper, three to go. All right, guys, so I dare I say, I think we are pretty much done with the turning. All these pieces fit together just great, actually. And these, are, these I'm considering brazing them on. I'm going to have to do a test, <laughs> a test one before I tackle that. In any case, turning over, turning done. And I just finished looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that could have helped <laughs> if I would have read it. Anyways, he's got some interesting jaw ideas in here. He's talking about squaring it up in the, in the fore jaw, but I kind of wanted to try something else. Since I made a tool a long, <laughs> seems like a, a long time ago now. I made this fly cutter a long time ago now. And it's a little different than what I had in the video because, you yeah, know, reasons. So I'm going to fly cut this down to size and see how that goes. Well, I didn't put that pulley on there for nothing. Here we go. Yeah, that's uh, pretty fast. <laughs> Oh boy. Dang. I didn't give it very much, there were a couple thousands. Uh, I'm missing most of it. Yeah, but it's weird. You can see how it's hitting on the back end. It's, it's not. I don't know why it's doing that at all. And you can you can totally feel that too. All right, so I'll give it about a five thou depth of cut here. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm pretty scared of this thing. Uh, I tightened up the gib on here, so maybe that'll help. We'll see. Give her some WD. <laughs> vibration on this thing. Here we go.
Yeah, it's still hitting on the back end. Well, so I'm at a loss here, trying to figure out what's going on with this thing. Probably lots of things. But you know, there it is right there. There's that little jump. About a thousandth. A thousandth of an inch. But then it's pretty much spot on after that. Could be just the, because it's a Babbitt bearing spindle. Maybe that's why it's doing that. And it's just reacting differently once it hits the other side of that. So I might not be able to do this whole thing in one shot. I might have to do one piece at a time. So that's actually the tool out of my fly cutter. I'm using it in uh, protest. It don't get much better than that. That is really nice. Hey, since we're on Shop Made Tools Month, I ripped this thing out of an old drill press, arbor and all. I've never really even tried it yet, so. Don't do that. You can find these old uh, multi craft Jacobs chucks in just about any old drill that you find, pretty much. Black and Decker, or whatever. But they are Jacobs, so they're not horrible. This one is particularly old. So it seems to be following the hole just fine. I'm good with that. We can know what that's all about. Okay, we're stepping up our drill size here. Still using the uh, carriage mounted drill chuck. It's, uh, we've got one size under 5 16 And I am thinking I might engage the power feed on this just to see what happens. Because <laughs> I've always wanted to do it, you know. We'll see how this drill starts and then we'll go from there. This could be pretty wild, but really bad. Actually, I think it'll be okay. It's pretty smooth. Car feed engaged. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Of course, we're gonna get some pretty seriously long. Actually, that's not bad. I push it harder than that. It's not bad at all. We need about three inches here, so I'm not sure where we're at. It's probably pretty damn close right there. Oh, yeah. I really love this thing. All right, so uh, I'm not really sure how good this chuck will be for a reamer. I guess that's what safety glasses are for. At the very least, we'll be able to clear the chips really fast. I'm not sure how fast to go. Let's see. I may have to adjust that a bit. That's it. Little chamfer. Let's get dangerous. thought there was enough blade there 
Okay, take three. Take two. Sweet. Well, I'm really glad that that worked out because that'll save me a lot. Oh, look at that. Hey, okay. nice. All right, folks, so we're going to skip ahead here a little bit because uh, parting it off in the four jaw in that fashion did not pan out at all. So what happened, we'll use this one for an example. This one was actually parted off the closest to the chuck, but I didn't have a whole lot of chuck engagement in there. And to the outside where I want, well, I got it to about where I wanted it. I wanted a pretty snug fit, but to the inside of this, it's quite a bit larger. So what was happening is I was, as I was parting it off, it was pushing the part outwards and resulted in a convex and concave side. I ended up parting this one off. This one was not as bad, but it was uh, still not good. And I ended up parting it too short anyway because of the, uh, I forgot to calculate the blade thickness in that one. So garbage. And then, so when I went to redo it all in my four jaw, well, rest in peace four jaw, but it's not the end of the world. We still got a plan to fix this issue. <laughs> Since the part is small enough, you really only have to get it on one side of the fly cutter, so the uh, the pull on the spindle isn't really affecting it. There, I just took a little five thou cut. You can see the wicked con convex nature of that. That's that's pretty bad. So we're just gonna take care of those, and these should be okay after that. <laughs> One thing I'll give the fly cutter, it sure is fast. And it does a pretty nice job too. Not bad. Alright guys, honestly wasn't even gonna try this, but I did get a 45 degree uh technically a drill point end mill, I guess. And we're gonna try to put a little V groove in this block. Let's see what happens. A 50 thou depth of cut. Drawing is calling for 100,000, so we'll see it up. We're going 25 now. Uh, 
honestly, to me, it doesn't look like that's working out very good. Well, I'll well finish her off. Oh, frustration level is very high. Well, maybe it's just a burr there. Well, actually, no, it looks good. No, it looks good. Just a burr there. Whew. <laughs> God damn it. That looks really good. Now I gotta do that to all of them. All right, so this first one didn't work out so good. Drilled it out to 3 16 but apparently the drill is, and I buggered it up and I had used the hand drill to ream it out a little bit with a bigger drill bit, but I picked the wrong drill bit. So that one's uh, not so great. And I just pressed these guys on there. Because apparently my 3 16 drill bit is either exactly 3 16 or it's a little bit under. Weird. So this is, a, I think, a number 11 drill bit on this one. And it's that's a much better fit. Much better. So I think... Uh, I'm just going to press these on because they're pretty tight in there. Yeah, that's a nice tight press fit too. It's not bad at all. Surprising. But those ain't coming off. Oops. Oh, I hate those things. Well, dare I say, I think all of these parts are finally done. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm just going to finish cleaning up these little... Uh, weld patches and hit them with the file and i'm going to figure out something to do with the patino on these i was considering the vinegar treatment and then maybe i don't know then maybe like a a heat heat blue i don't know all right guys so i soaked these all in vinegar i let this guy sit out for the last few days after being soaked in you know it's just been sitting in a bucket of oil for this is vegetable oil for the past uh, I don't know, week <laughs> you don't have to let it sit that long i'm sure but uh it hasn't started to rust or anything so i think it's good but i got it it took all that uh mill scale right off of there it just wiped right off like nothing i kind of wish i had it on video but anyways i think we're just going to clean these up now and wipe all the oil and crap off them and uh do our final assembly Well, those are awesome. Those are some beautiful clamps, actually. I'm really happy with those. Well, I'm going to say that would pretty much conclude this build. I'm super happy with these. These are going to come in very, very handy. Thanks again, Doug, for this awesome kit. It was, uh, it was real fun make, putting these together. And a, and a challenge, not going to lie. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun as I had. Thanks for watching. <laughs>